Welcome, everybody. It's Monday. We're going to kick off the week in traditional per chat's voting. Best of three wins the day, which is nice. I have gorged myself on best of one. I spent all weekend farming gems in quick draft, testing out the bots. Uh, whenever a new set launches quick draft and we get our first crack at the bots for a set, I like to take whatever the consensus best deck of the format is and try forcing it. Because bottom line, if the community has figured out what the best deck is, largely, and the bots are not tuned to take that best deck highly enough, then suddenly you're going to be able to get the best deck shipped to you consistently because the bots do not change, they do not have a meta, they do not adjust, they are not aware that you're exploiting them every single time. and. Boy, is it exploitable. The quick drafts, uh, if you want to uh, crush, <laughs> well, I don't know, it's gonna be It's gonna be just a sea of black-red mirrors in short order, I expect, but with the debut of them this weekend, I was taking advantage of the early lack of awareness around uh, the black-red dominance. I drafted four quick drafts over the weekend when a combined uh, 28 and three, two seven O's, a seven one, and a seven two in my first four uh, quick drafts, all just straight forcing black red right out of the gate. I don't care what rare mythic it is. I don't care if it's the mind flare or whatever. We are going red black, and boy, did it pay off. So you can absolutely do that. I mean, you're signing yourself up for um, a, playing a ton of red black uh, against and with, and. Uh, but I, I don't know. I find it very fun to crush it magic. So like going 28 and three over the <laughs> over a weekend was like, wow, that felt powerful. You know, now the thing is now I'm like kind of done. It's like I uh, there was a free ice cream buffet over the weekend and I ate ice cream at the buffet all weekend long. And now I'm kind of like, well, I wonder if we can do something else today. So, I, you know, if the deck if the table hands me black red here, I'm going to take it. And if the if, and we're not gonna I'm not gonna force not black red, but if we do have some close choices, I will try to lean towards trying something else. Um, but certainly, black red has emerged as the clear best deck in the format, and I think the reason why is that it doesn't matter what parts you get. It's like almost no matter what combination of common and uncommon red black parts you get, you can cobble together a strategy that works from it. It's just like almost, oh, look, that wield. Sure, I can do that. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Um, and uh, so I, uh, I, I just figured, um, We'll, we'll try and lean away from it if there's something else to do. Well, yeah, I would love it. Uh, I mean, I, the other, of course, deck that I've had weird success with is uh, Blue-White Flying Dungeoneers, which I'm at a similar almost... Uh, I do think I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm actually... I think I have done four Blue-White drafts, and I've trophied all of those as well. Uh, I'm, But in those four trophies for the blue white decks i have not been as confident that that i was that i had some dominant archetype i thought i was getting very i was winning some very close games and getting awfully lucky to uh, to have as the success i did with that not that it's bad it's just not it's not that it's 28 win good um but i do really enjoy that so if we can if we can get there i will uh, if you want to get to cardkingdom.com, you can see my sponsor and everything they have to offer. They are purveyors of everything you need for your tabletop game. And I'll make it quick. You all know what I'm talking about. Just hit them up when you're looking for cardboard and uh, do it from my affiliate links, and it helps keep me on the air. When you associate your business with, uh, with me, that you do with them it is like the number one thing short of just uh, giving me donations via my donation link to uh, support what I do here. So thank you so much for all that. And thank you Card Kingdom for your support. Let's pay 1500 in gems and get into the draft view. Update this stuff. I may do a quick draft, you know, I may do an example run of a black red quick draft run later. We're going to start here for now, but we'll see. Maybe afterwards. Robert, you're going to get out of timeout at some point, right? Oh uh, no, I won't do that. It'll take him off of moderator. That it's only it's just too much of a pain to remod you. 
you escaped. Shots fired. <laughs> Shots fired back. Well, I said I wasn't going to force it, but like this is like the best card in the pack. It's better than this. Oh, this is actually, we could try this. You want to take the scholar? <laughs> like, well, this puts me right to the test, right? Single color, worst color, but uh, but really uh, interesting build around versus like signpost for the deck. I mean, this is correct, right? I'm going to do the correct thing. Graz is darn good, but have you read this? Have you seen this card in action? Um, not much else going on here, though. We could take uh, Planar Ally if I wanted to lean towards... Thing is, I, the thing is, when my blue-white deck is doing its thing, it's because I'm getting Planar Ally, like, tenth, you know, not second. Um... Yeah, I think we just take the Goblin over the Evolving Wilds. But Pegasus and Ally are both interesting to me. They're just too early. There's like, this is, I fall into this when this isn't available, basically. Yeah, no, worth noting, no black. That means a black card was taken. We have rare and three uncommon. So a black common was taken. That is definitely worth noting. Uh, I don't think it's a reason to take Planar Ally or Pegasus, which I think are the, the next best cards here. I mean, you take this as a, a, a literal grizzly bear. The magic, the, the ability basically doesn't do anything. Probably Grim Bounty, that'd be my guess. I mean, I think drop is a little early to take a drop pick one, but out of, out of that pack. I mean, that wasn't a great pack though, either. I mean, we took Pair of Goblins, so. Uh, Hunter's Mark. Probably the best card here. Prosperous Innkeeper is the best card if we're specifically in the um, the life gain deck. I would rather just take Hunter's Mark, which is good in any green deck, as opposed to the Innkeeper, which I think is just good in the life gain deck. And um, there's no black here either. So let's uh, read that signal and take a strong green. Okay, well, that's the card I want. We're experiencing the classic magic the Gathering Arena bug here, but I'm just going to let this tick down. No, this is a human draft. If Whenever you see a clock, you know it's humans. There, there's no clock in the bot draft, which was, of course, the original design intent of creating that system. Said Fast Paladin here is good as well. Uh, I haven't... I've been drafting so much black-red, I've stopped seeing other colors in a lot of ways, but I should I need to snap out of it because, I mean, there's white open here as well. We could take uh, Steadfast Paladin, um, Cleric Class. You like Cleric Class over the Paladin? Yeah, I guess as a payoff, we would if we're going to head in that direction, we want to take a payoff. Dispute is excellent if we bank back into the black red for sure. Uh, but let's spec on something different in all, you know, in a different color pair, and especially um, since we do feel like black is being cut from the right. What do we got here? Not much appealing. Champ is generically playable in a base white green deck. We could just take it. It also could play in um, in white red. Yeah, we could take more gobos. You got y'all like the the gobos. I guess we're not, this is not, like if this were the 2-2 uh, two, two lifelinker, I would take it, but sure, we can take gobos here, see, what, see what's open. What is this table telling us to do? Here's a deadly dispute. Uh, there's some medium green here, and there's an evolving wilds, which I like one of, but I think we'll take a dispute. Yeah, Circle of the Moon Druid, I've, I've uh, yeah, I agree, Math. Um, I was, I saw this and thought, whatever. It has definitely overperformed, but I, 
Um, but I'm going to take the dispute. Wizard class still being here is show a sign of where blue is at in the format, I suppose. We can take a zombie ogre here or a beholder, but I think zombie ogre better than beholder if we're going to be doing any sacking. This is a weird card. Sometimes it has a place in what I'm doing. Sometimes it does not. Uh, bull strength and bard are, are a bit signally. Of course, all this blue is somewhat signally, but um, eyes being the uh, the six mana removal spell. It's um, certainly playable. Windfall has not overperformed for me, but it's certainly playable. Check for traps. I don't love. I'm going to take bull strength on spec. And uh, shepherd can work in the life gain deck as well. Wow. <laughs> Wizards, come on. Man. Uh, it disappeared in a bug, and now I can't pick it. See, wizards, I would like to pick that, but I can't. Fine, I'll take check for traps instead so that I can take something that matters for my deck, even though that's not what I wanted. You meet in a tavern has seemed so bad for people. Like, every time someone's cast this, I've won. I'd ra I think I'd rather just have this. This, like... I'm gonna take this. Grab gems here. And I guess I'll take leather armor. Seems like definitely forcing not blue around here, but I'll take this. There's no way we're playing two leather armor, right? Man, I should just force blue, uh, blue, white adventuring since nobody wants blue but there's a reason nobody wants blue owlbear versus spoils if we want to um, continue down the green path do you like a spoils but yeah let's take an owlbear seems like the best card here i mean it's a pivot point though you can take hobgoblin captain you know if you want like it's a lot of stuff going on here. We don't really know what we're doing. I'll, I'll cut the blue because I think it's confusing things. I don't think we want to be blue either. If somebody can get a reasonable hookup. White, green, life gain isn't completely out of realm of possibility. But bear... We're also... Just because we take green doesn't mean we're green white. So I think we will take an owl bear, but it doesn't mean we're green white. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what we take from here. Yeah, so like now we could just take another of these. Certainly there's I mean I don't want I don't want Gretchen. I don't want this. You all want Jund? That doesn't I don't uh yeah, I mean we just take a precipitous drop. I think I'll take this though. Come on. I just may have to let go of green. I don't, I, I don't, you know, the whole jundam out. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but I may just uh, pivot back to the black red here. It is a very confusing draft. We got to take Battlecry Goblin, though. And now we got some shit to figure out. What's going on? This, uh, I guess we take a ranger? Take a white dragon? No. This is not going the way I want. Javelinier is interesting with the Battle Cry Goblin, but I'm going to try to get that later. Yeah, we might just be Gruel. We'll see. I think we take the Ranger, though. Channeler is quite strong if you can attack with it. 
I, I almost feel like I almost never do, but if you can, save it with bull strength, that kind of thing. Here we take the Moon Druid over the gems. You think Chaos Channel alone makes Barbarian class worth it? I don't know. I don't think Barbarian class does enough. You need a lot more than that, right? Uh, we could take Clutches in case, or Manticore, but probably just Rapier. Since it looks m more gruely than anything here. Best of three, we'll take a Plummet for the board. That's premium out of the board. Been pretty down on Cell Sword. Boots of Speed have been pretty up on. Choose your weapon. Um, it's choose your weapon or boots. Again, we're best of three, and this is more uh, great removal against flying. I'm actually going to take uh, the sideboard card because I don't want. M I want zero or one boots, and if it's zero, I'm cool with that, and I feel like we'll be able to get one later. Here's another plummet uh, with uh, two anti-flyer cards in the board, though. I think we can just take a playable card here. Uh, I think we want this four over this four. Uh, yeah, maybe actually do want this. That's more flexible. We're not really doing the life gain thing, but that's more flexible. And I'll take uh, uh, gems over the hawk. That's a good point. First bard over second bullet. Yeah, the pack tactics is one of the reasons Moon Druid has gone up, right? That uh just having that four power of attacking on uh on four. Well, what a craptastic pack for us. I mean, we're prime red green and like this is what we get? Another pair of goblins? We want to take this? I mean, yeah, Plundar is, has overperformed as well. Grim Bounty uh, presumes that we are heavy black, though, and, and I dispute that. I don't think we're jundin' them out. We're going to jund ourselves out if we try that. I think this is where we're at. Well, we need some twos. This is a two, this is a two. Removal two or um, just solid two? I think we take the removal two. Boy, if we can wheel Null Hunter, that'd be fantastic. Here's like that Boots of Speed I'm talking about. Uh, if we were to splash, maybe splashing the battle hammer, except that you just really want to get the equipment going with this. I don't really see the troll. I don't think this is good. Um, boots or fireball, depending on what we feel we could really use. Uh, we have a hunter's mark and a burning hands and a combat trick, but no other real uh, tricks. So I'm gonna take fireball and we'll probably wheel that boots. Yeah, we're already kind of stacked at five. Just have to keep that in mind. Prisoners versus shepherd. This is better in best of three. We can cut it or bring it, you know, it can be a swap in and out kind of card. Um. Really? Yeah, I'm not... Uh, I I think we're losing if we're doing that, though. Although this is pick three, pack three, and we're not in a great spot. I would rather just take a Shepherd, yeah. Fenner says map is powerful. Huh. I just feel like it's not powerful to spend your entire third turn on acceleration. 
Um, yeah, if we're getting to owl bears, I see, but it's just like, boy, you can get run over. Weaponry is fine here. Spoils of the hunt also good. Another chance at a barb class, but I'm just not, you know, I'm gonna take the removal. Find the path is like the same thing as the uh, the mana rock to me. I mean, we could take it. I just don't want to play these things. I don't want to play either of them. But yes, it's worse. Yeah, we can take gems, sure. This is a gem pick for sure. Don't want to play either of them. White ended up pretty open. We could take a containment if we felt that we needed to splash removal. Not splashing a... Harold, I'm not playing that in heavy black. Maybe Noel Camp, you could make a case for. I'll at least throw it in the board. Yeah, I should have taken Bow over nothing. You're right. Uh, but hey, this is a nice board card. Yeah, yeah, I should have, I should have taken the Reach weapon. I was thinking, uh, not thinking best of three enough when I made that non-pick. Troll, I'll take here for Vault Progress as much as anything. Wow, like we have to splash because <laughs> we don't even have playables. Uh, longbow for the board. I can take this one. I don't think I want a second strength. So maybe I do take a longbow and maybe we even main deck it. Fenrir likes another strength. Yeah, it's true. Longbow can main deck though. It's not exciting, but it can. Um, we can bring in this. But I, I, I hear you. I don't. I would. Bring in that for another trick. Maybe I have to play this. I don't like this card, but I suppose um, in a grindy game, we could get there with it. It's just not where I want to be. Give me a. Six seven giant or seven six giant any day. Um, where is this? Oh, we're only at twelve creatures. What a bad deck we ended up with. Would have been better off just forcing blue. Yeah, uh, didn't I put it in? I, yeah, I put the naturalized modal in. There it is. Oh no, this this you mean this one? Yes. Yeah, probably. Sorry, this is the the fly the flying killer modal, not naturalized modal anyway. Um, this would get us no splash, and I would like to not splash. Our there's nothing we're doing splash wise that's powerful unless we want to actually bring in. You hear something on the watch and containment. Like I could see splashing literal white for removal. Uh, we could, but none of this black isn't worth playing. Uh, we're not we're not playing a, a painter that needs to come down on two to do its thing. Oh, it's awful, Fenor. We're gonna hope if we can get if we can get a thousand gems out of this, we're gonna fist pump, and I'm not gonna complain at all. If we owe two, I'm gonna say, well, finally, there's some justice in magic. A bad deck went owe two. What are you gonna What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> you know. Um, if we go 18 lands, what do you want to cut? Probably a non-creature for sure. I mean, we could cut the Dryad for the 18th land. Null camp worse than bull strength, so just probably cut that. Cut them all and redraft. Now nah, we're going to give it a shot and uh, see how it goes. Do we want do we want an even split? I guess we do. We've got early red and early green. Oh, it's not good. I don't know how we win. This is so this is like one of the worst de decks I've drafted in the format. But we have some top end. I mean, the answer is we draw our our good stuff. We, our battle cry goblin just 
win single-handedly. Our owl bear comes out and they can't answer it. I don't know. It's not a good deck, though, gang. This is, un the, you know, get your voting fingers ready, but uh, this is like a one winner. I, I would I would be... Uh... Yeah, I think we uh, keep the Dryad in and we go to 18 lands. Um, what do we call this, though? We have to have a name that reflects the, our disappointment here. Um... Moonshot. Uh, <laughs> shoot the moon. <laughs> Moon language. Hot moss is funny. Yeah, let's go with that. Any land redemption? Sleeves for Mama, we'll mark that. Well, if we go with uh, these sweet Mirage lands, we can't lose, right? That's my working theory. <laughs> this deck. Yeah, I got stubborn. That's all right. It happens. Sometimes you train wreck. Sometimes you win even though you train le wreck. Let's do that thing. Oops, sorry, wrong poll. I'll let that, I, I did the wrong auto poll. <laughs> Those are your win choices. Are we gonna go 3-0 or 1-0? <laughs> I think I would choose one, but uh, this is that was a, a mistaken poll. I'm gonna let that resolve. Well, this is not gonna help our cause. Leading with the mulligan here. And now we got to keep this despite starting on four. Like, whatever. All right. All right. Things we got. Not this. Not this. Good choice on the poll, but now I'll do the real one. All right, drawing a three drop is about the best we could have hoped for there, honestly. Truly thrilled to see the Circle of the Moon Druid here. Exactly. Our, I think our expectations are set properly with our uh, upcoming experience here. So now uh, Bard showing its worth. We would have no attacks without the Bard. With the Bard, we do have attacks. We'll take that. Oh, sorry about that. Here you go. Thanks for the reminder. I should put a one in the poll. I think that I think uh, Hat made these polls, but I think I think a, a one is a legit choice. Well, um, Rust Monster blocks the four two. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Burning Hands the Rust Monster to try and create an attack here. Well, we didn't find a land for the Owl Bear, so yes, I get it. But Lowell could be zero. Like Lowell in the other poll is in place of zero uh, is like effectively the zero vote, right? It doesn't matter. What is this uh, four mana about? Not sure, but we're going to make them have it. Looks like maybe they've got a trick of some kind. Ah, it's the Manticore. We'll take that. We're a little behind on cards. They've got five in hand to our three, and uh, we've each got a creature on board. If we can find a land, though, we get a card back. Uh, and it's nice that we have big drops here, which is often the key to beating red-black. 
just actually getting big enough. And one for one removal there, not the worst. Uh, I could go Barbarian Treasure to ensure Owlbear next turn off Treasure, but I'd rather just max the mana and uh, hope that we find land naturally coming up. You'd Barb. I like just a 3-3. Three, three. Fenor and Syriana like making treasure. I'm a gambler. I'm going to gamble on a land off the top and know that we still have the fallback plan of a Barbarian next turn. Yeah, I get it. This is better when stuff has died. But uh, this works too. And in fact, we'll do... I'm going to make the treasure and then I can bull strength if we want. Or we can just let the trade happen. But I guess if they block, I'll take it. It's worth it. It's going to get a counter as well. And it gets him to nine, too. We had trample there, so. I swear this this is a this combat trick that does a little of everything. That's true. Let's see. We've got uh, Loathsome Troll and the 5-5 uh, five, five Ranger are the, and the Fireball are, are the three bad draws. We had three five drops. That's Those are the only bad draws in the deck. Now uh, we're just going to send in uh, the open mana scares me again. Could be another Manticore, but then we get to follow with an Owlbear. Seems good. Yeah, we'll... we'll, we'll uh, we could just send the Barbarian if we really wanted to worry about the other Manticore, but I think we just give it to them, and then uh, the Owlbear puts them in a tough spot. And we still get them to seven. Oh, they're going for that. That's means not Manticore. Hmm, maybe this means Swarming Goblin to get wider? I mean, these both deal four power, but this, put, this draws a card. This puts a, at least one more creature on the battlefield. I think we do this. Maybe we get three more. All right, one more. Owlbear does trample. That's a good a good point, Pablo. I think we got it, though. At least game one. Oh, no, I, sorry. I thought that was during their main phase. So they can get one of our creatures, but if they spend their whole turn on Pit Trap, we do have it. Yeah, it does put lethal out against one blocker. But Owlbear might be lethal against one blocker. Well, no. No, I guess because they could just chump that one, right? Yeah. Anyway, it worked. Yeah, it did not seem like a great black-red deck, right? Uh, some... That's best of three for you, though. Uh, game one, best of... Match one, best of three. You can really match against anybody. Literally anybody that is also zero and zero. Um, yeah, just checking out what they're doing. Kind of a mix of... I mean, they got some good removal. We got to uh, keep the Manticore in mind. Somebody's asking if the Windfall... Like, that's this is what I've seen from Windfall. It's like people cast it and it doesn't suck terribly. But if they're not... If they don't convert it into a win shortly after, it's often just wheel spinning while your opponent is doing stuff. Uh, no flyers that I see here. Oh, we got the... No, sorry, we do have the Manticore, but not worth bringing in a um, anti-flying, I don't think. We already have one in there, just inherently anyway. So we don't have much uh, in the way of change. Really, our big question is if we're bringing in anti-flying tech in our sideboarding. And in this case, no. The answer is no. Yeah, that dwarf is just not good. But because one threes for two aren't very good in the format. Uh, but you can, you know, I, I think... It's maybe a little underrated in the sense that it's regarded as wildly unplayable, when in fact it does have the baseline vanilla test of a 1-3 for 2, which in an aggressive format with a lot of 2-1s, you know, you can do worse. 
We're gonna keep this. We'd like something to do on two, but this deck can't really be very greedy about that. We're probably doing first play on turn three and just hoping we don't get stone rolled. Now Oppo is doing more along the lines of what I expect from this color pair in the format. Rusty. It's probably going to take a bull strength to take care of that. Do wish I had that second bull strength now, Fenor. I think we'd be running it happily. Even though we're like so low on creatures to be happy about combat tricks, this deck is just bad. But magic these days, even your bad decks can get there with the right draws. And in this case, uh, we can go bull strength and rapier if we decide it's worth it. Uh, Channeler is also... Um, we could also just channel her and then set up a next turn attack with all this stuff. Maybe that's the best. I think I'm going to go get the channeler out now and just hold. All right, now... With Channeler, I'm not going to play a land because we can do Rapier and Strength here. And uh, this should be a great attack for us. Fifteen is going to give us a couple options. You get a Plundar. So hopefully we just use Bull Strength and then follow with Plundar. All right, that can't kill this, and we bull strength here, and it can't kill this either. So I, unless the uh, unless they got uh, an instant of their own, this should be good. We could get blown out, but let's make them have it. Oh, but they can get a treasure off of the. Uh, I think the Manticore is a reasonable idea, but if they if they have it. Tip the cap. I'm already happy. I got I get two cards out of the channeler. We get a free land and a free spell. So channeler can die and, and we'll be pretty happy about the result. I could blow up their treasure in case it I mean we have a lot of mana. I think I'll go for their treasure. I expect it's the Manticore as we think. Um, but we'll still make them do it. Yeah, I know, but the treasure's not that useful to us, so in case this isn't Manticore, let's keep him off of uh, mana for next turn. So we, this is probably just Manticore, but it's still correct. Oh, wrong choice, Oppo. Why did you choose that one? What? Oppo. Unless you have a specific answer for this, I don't know why you did that. Um, we got instant speed spoils of the hunt as well now, so just great for us. Send it all. Burning hands we can just cast right now. <laughs> Jeez, which I will do. I could cast spoils as well, but that one we don't have to cast this turn, so I was less um, eager about it. Yeah, I probably should have played Rapier. I got uh, caught in my head on, on the right side of my screen and forgot I had an option on the left. That yeah, Rapier would have been fine. I mean, what else are we doing with it if not getting extra damage in a spot like that? Um, we could even throw it down now. Uh, I kind of like spoils. Plus, when you each mana treasure you spent, 
Um, just, yeah, we don't get a bonus on our turn, so I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it here. Yeah, now if it's a second Manticore, they don't have a kill on the channeler. And could just rapier now as well. Although better on the unblocked one. We could owl bear, uh, except we have channeler, so I should just attack. I keep forgetting that Oppo let our channeler live. Sure. I've never nat 20 on that before. Uh, your timing is off, friend. Your timing is off. It was second Manticore indeed. At least it was a nat 20 that had a nat 20. I mean, how many times have you rolled a nat 20 on a card that didn't have a nat 20? All right, I got my win, baby. I'm already, <laughs> I already feel like, well, if I don't win anymore, justice will be served, but uh, we got a win. Yeah, now we have to play a deck that has won a match, and now we're in trouble. Oh, so bad, but we're gonna keep. <laughs> we just need a we just need an early creature. Yeah, it's true, Fenor. Fenor observes that uh, sometimes they can't find a good match for you and just parry you, so you're not waiting around. All right, something to do on three. I like it. Very happy to draw a three. I mean, a two would be better, but beggars, choosers, etc. I'm just happy our first play isn't on five at this point. All right, Robert, we'll catch you. Now we just hope that this paladin doesn't attack in. If they attack in, they've got tricks and blah. But although we can just wait and have our own bull strength or something. All right. Yeah, we can get a refund. It's true. I don't know if I will. We'll see. That's true. I should, I mean, I guess I should keep harping on him. Uh, this is nice. We can send in the shepherd. It's got, it's funny. It's got the uh, um, vigilance anyway, but they they get the free block with the gargoyle, but we get to uh, beat it. And then, uh, or we can hunter's mark the paladin. I'm not sure what we want to do, but I think we send in and probably just bull strength to get the gargoyle. No, we also have um, a uh, split card, double power or five damage to flyer uh, uh, second person card. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and take it out. Yeah, pun I mean, we have some removal, yep. I mean, I, I thought you were talking about flyer-specific stuff. Uh, now we get a free attack. Hopefully they try to double block and treat it as a one-for-one, one, but if they do, we get to Hunter's Mark and blow them out. And if not, I think we just ranger and double up our creature count. Rare double strike and dragon. What else does this do? When it enters a battlefield, create a 4-1. Sure, that's just free, because that makes sense. Uh, whenever a creature dies, if it had power... Okay, we're just going to kill the thing. 
But we have uh, two instant speed uh, effects now. Uh, we can't cast them both this turn, but they're both instant. Uh, we can attack and wait for blocks and then do it, but I guess we don't gain anything from that. Swing all, get the paladin. I don't know what you mean by get the paladin. How does it blow him out on the 2-2? Two -two? Oh, because this plus one, plus one, got it. That's why. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um... Well, we could give him the chance anyway. We leave the ranger back. You like swing all? All right. Yeah, sure. I like the uh, notion that we got to take some uh, go for go for gusto here to win with a medium deck anyway. I see the, the the idea is that we hunters mark the two two to make it a or the two three to get a three four or a uh, so that trade we accept. There we go. So we got a bunch of trades we accept, but then we get to mark this and end up with a uh, wolf in the end. Well, that cleared things up. Boy, we might need to, I mean, we, if we if we really want this thing dead, which we might, we could go plus two and we could two for one ourselves to get rid of the ally. I'm not sure how much uh, how much we want to, but yeah, we'll we'll um, we can one we can one for one if they block. Um, both of these are instant speed, so we can decide. Boy. I'm going to let him um, attack once. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to attack with a 2-2. Two, two, hope that they're willing to at least put the 2-3 the in front of it. And then we can plus 2, plus 0 to trade uh, with the Peggy. And then spoils to kill the ally. Uh, if this doesn't work, we're, I mean, they should really just take this and be like, fine, let's race. But again, I'm just hoping that, um, that they do something like this. It's all, it's all we got. Two, five. Well, we have to take out the uh, planar ally, so we're going to do that. But this one's slipping away, and deck is performing as expected this time. Hey, suborbital man. Sorry, Bezos. Suborbital. Do you know what those words mean? I guess that's one word. Do you know what that prefix means? Bezos? Sub? It 
equipment is the biggest flavor fail in magic since it uh, mixes and matches equipment with creatures that can't possibly handle it. I like stuff like uh, plate mail on a ranger's hawk. Oh, so, so glad you're here, terrible card. This card is so bad. This is emblematic of this deck to me. I should have played this so I could get it back, but really I'm just gonna scoop. Like this game is widely, wide, wildly over. I've stopped paying attention to the game, so let's move on. Yeah, definitely got a plummet matchup, right? Get in there. Could even bring in the longbow. Uh, Idol has a home, though. Uh, lots of equipment to take out. I, I don't know. The bow might not be worth it, but I do like having um, the ability to just straight block flyers as opposed to use removal on flyers. You know, let's cut the Dryad, which was kind of a weak inclusion anyway. Uh, and I guess rapier could go out if we're bringing in longbow in. Let's let's keep our removal our, our equipment at a reasonable count. Given, yeah, rapier is good, but uh, I'm I'm thinking in terms of jobs. Like, uh, I just don't want to. I like if we pile up equipment and don't have the creatures. That's just the worst feeling. I mean, I could I, I could cut this damn troll. I hate this troll, but we're just so low on creatures. You don't love idle? I mean, we've seen um, shield, torch, and gargoyle. I mean, that's three targets that we'd be okay using a card on for two mana. Is Dryad better than Troll? I'm going to say no. The Dryad is not better than Troll. Yeah, we could still bring it in because it is a repeat. Cre it, you know, it, it's. Ugh. It's so bad, though. I, I don't like it, but what am I cutting if not that? I hear what you're saying. Rapier is fine. I'm going to cut it. It's not... It's fine. It's not amazing. It's cuttable. If we're bringing in a different equipment for a different job. All right. Keep this. At least Longbow is a turn two play. Rapier isn't a turn one or two play. Not usually. Yeah, we can weapon the Hawk and get a troll on four. Or I guess we'll weapon the Paladin instead. New plan. We could also Plundar for the treasure, but might as well uh, kill a Lifelinker for the treasure. Hooray, we get an early troll that still just trades with a circle of the moon druid. One toughness could matter in attacks, though. Got our own moon druid. Uh, we could plunder and get the treasure to actually equip, but um, troll trading is good, but not for a priest. I'm going to leave it back on D against the circle and play our own. You like the line of plunder into equip? Um, yeah, but so does the circle. I mean, we just hold the ground with the circle. I'll, I'll threaten to trade for theirs and eat this. That's fine. Let's do this. You say we need to get swinging. Why? 
Like you just want to like like you're trying to so we can equip. I mean, if you want to get swinging, we get equip and go. We're not on a clock in the air. We have Rangers longbow and flyer killers. I'm not worried about these. Why are we worried about these with a bow? I'm going to do my play. I mean, these get annoying if they start venturing. This is the other reason I wanted to hold Barb. I mean, we've got targets in this deck. Perfect draw now is a land so that we can barb away the torch and equip our longbow. Yeah. If they get rid of our longbow, then I'm worried about the flyers, but... <laughs> now I'm worried about the flyers, but I'm also feeling like that was okay. Now we've got, uh, we got our land here. We can get rid of their um, torch, and we can do that after combat, though. I'm going to just send in attacks. we got to start trading now. They get the priest for the uh, for the moon druid. I guess we can leave the moon druid back against these two, but I'm going to send the troll. You want to choose your weapon what? Like the one of the flyers? Oh, to save it? Mm, no, maybe when I attack with a circle of the moon druid, we would do that. Uh, I think this is fine here. I, I kind of like this as flyer killer. Um... And we're still, these aren't that oppressive. Maybe they'll go for equipment on a hawk, and we can then pick it out of the air. But certainly uh, doubling power and toughness is an interesting combat trick to have available. Oh, it's so bad. So bad! Still going to hold the weapon. Don't quite want to use it on those flyers yet. Um, fireball. Not the best here. Could send in the moon druid and know that we have our own barb on defense. We could fireball the moon druid, but if they want to trade off, that's fine. I think we want to attack with the moon druid and probably kill the stalker. Let's see how they want to block. If they want to block. But then either way, well, we fireball after this. Although with that, if they're literally going to do that, then I almost like the troll play. Although if we just wait for one more mana, we get to bring it back and have weapon available. So maybe I'll just max the mana here. Yeah, instant, instant. In it's all their turn. Good point, JC. We'll at least pass and figure it out. Fireball is an instant. I gotta remember. I don't play this much, honestly, but it's relevant that it's an instant for sure. And do we want to damage? Yeah. Still gonna hold. And that's part of the reason why. Kind of want to wait for that. I think I'm gonna go load some troll here.
since the barbarian is successfully holding off the circle of the moon druid may as well try to reestablish this feller on board they may be debating going to the uh, tomb of annihilation trying to pressure our life total probably still correct for them to just go down the middle go down go to the mines but we'll see Well, nice to get that in our hand, at least. Effectively, a uh, extra draw. Could send in Plundar, and um, plus two would be good-ish. But really, probably just want Troll. Uh, or Troll, take two more in the air. And see about next turn. Could even do something crazy like troll plus two double. We could do like 16 with the troll with choose your weapon and pair of goblins. I can't believe I've recast the troll. Interesting. Does that ah it doesn't leave us with three? Um now I think we need to Yeah, we send in the troll, we can double it, we can If we send in the troll, they just block with the circle. And what we need to do is kill the ally. Are we happy with them blocking the troll again? If what we need to do is kill the ally. If we'd kill the ally with weapon, um, we could potentially make uh, gobos on the backswing. Hmm. Allies gotta die. Can't do two spell unless we do choose your weapon pair. Probably don't want to do choose your weapon pair. I think I'm just going to fireball the ally. You like sending troll, but I mean, I think they just block and then what? If they block here, are we happy with that? Maybe we're happy with that. I guess it's still eventually the plan. So fine, I'll start with a troll and offer that for anything. Would like to roll high here. I, I would like to not take two if we can help it, but we'll see. All right, that was good. Saving two there is a nice roll. Biggin. That's a problem. Uh, what do we do about that? We can... Really, we need to choose up in the air. I guess we can just chump on the ground with goblins. So there's that. And then get a loathsome troll out to block it. So we're going to choose weapon a hawk. Uh, so that we're not just dead to these dumb hawks. Owlbear draw land is interesting, but then we don't have any play after we draw the land. I guess Owlbear does give us a double block. But I'm going to choose your weapon, kill flyer, make chumps. I could do this at instant speed, but I'm going to do it while they're tapped out.
two chumps from goblins gives us a couple turns to set up troll owlbear stuff. You not sending your hawk? Maybe they're just gonna um, venture off the hawk. I mean, they were tapped out, right? I mean, they were cardless, so I mean, whatever. If they have bull strength, we'll tip the cap and try to get them in the next game, or actually try to get the next match. We've already, we're already down a game here. I mean, I'm already at expectations for this deck, so I'm just kind of trying to scrap what I can. If we can pick up any gems out of this, if we get any match after the first one, it'll be a heel-click moment. Huh. So they didn't go for the hawk, but they also didn't venture... Interesting. Well, now we're going to go looking for land and then at least have the bull's strength. Now, we don't really have attacks here, though, unless we want to use the bull's strength. Can't leave a forest. There's only two of them. So we're going to try it. Found a land, not the right kind, but we found a land. Yeah, maybe they thought it was they must have thought it was sorcery apparently. Oh wow. How about the full millhouse? This is all instant speed. Um excellent. <laughs> The trample, it makes this big... Wow, they want to go for that, huh? All right, all right. Oh, we're punching the 7-6. We got to just try to race the hawk. We got a bard to gain some life here. I uh, got to do it on the owlbear, unfortunately. hoping Oppo would go for the owlbear block because then we eventually kill the herd gorger and have a 7-7 trampler that fully does its damage. And then we are facing a tough dragon again, so alright. Oh, this is an elf ranger. Sorry, it just feels like a dragon. Doesn't fly, I guess but it looks like it's jumping or something. Burning hands gets it done against the uh, the scurry thing. Life or pump is an interesting question. Probably pump because then we can send the owlbear and then uh have owlbear and barbarian and leave bard back on d high risk uh we're dead to removal don't like generally putting myself dead to removal because they can um oh maybe not dead to removal you go to one on removal no we are dead because then they get because if they um well it depends if they uh complete the if they can complete this mine they get a flying gargoyle but we're at one as it sits That would be a great trade. Oh, no, take it. Take, do that. Yeah. Trade for my 2-2. Two, two. 
Please. Yes! So you're saying there's a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. I mean, we can't really do it all here. But we can get them to three, and they can't get us to zero. I think so. I don't know what they're exactly up to, but we'll take it. Yeah, now I'd say, like, do I even want this to be my top deck? We'll decide. Maybe we may be in a spot where we can't activate this because we don't want this on the top of our library. Wow. All right. Well, Oppo's given us a chance to come back and win in three. <laughs> How bad is this that we don't even want to do the thing? Because it might go to the top of our library. Oh, this card. Still, it was part of how we won. I mean, we can't take it out. We just don't have enough going on. Rapier would have been okay. But I just don't love the double equip in uh, such a low creature situation. Yeah, I like it, Fenor. Let's prove that magic is fundamentally unfair and 3-0 with this deck. I like it. Good plan. Pesky Trolls is the flavor, whether you like me or not. Oh, what an awful opener. Uh, Chaos Challenger is great, but no double red in sight. I guess if we see a mountain off the top, this is fine with goblins into... Ugh, but I'm going to mulligan this, I think. Hoppa going first, though. They're not... Yeah, I'm going to mulligan. I want something sooner. All right, we'll keep this and drop that. Uh, we have more green in hand, which would make you want to keep the extra green, but Chaos Channeler is double red. Although we have Owlbear and Loathsome Troll on double green. Like, that's the trouble. We need doubles of everything. Um, I guess since we might draw something... No, actually, I cut the one-drop green creature. I'm going to do it this way. But we've got doubles everywhere. See, I'm, per I'm perfect. Exactly as... Just knew it. Just knew it was coming off the top. Oh, I guess I got friend requests and stuff. Well, this is looking rough all of a sudden. But we got blocks on the Paladin and spoils on the Moondancer if we can at least keep our circle around. Hey, look. 
turn four channeler. Uh, Oppo didn't show the capability of um, getting through this. If we take a chance on the channeler, the disappointing thing might be that they uh, they then find a way to double connect with this and get this to 5-5. Five, five. Mike likes getting a 3-3 three, three down, but if we're doing that, why not just get the 4-3 down, Mike? I like Chaos Channeler. I'm going to take a risk. As we've said, this deck isn't great. Let's take some risks. I see. You want to punch. I'm I'm doing this because we might get card value out card advantage out of it. And if they don't attack with the paladins here, if if we can hold, then we get to do all of our turn with the spoils available. That seems great. Yeah, if um I mean mistake. Like I made a calculated decision here. Risk reward. And given the strength of my deck, uh, taking on higher risk for better reward seemed appropriate to me. Maybe they'll go for uh, the left, the, the mad, mad wizard to give uh, Moon Dancer a counter here. Nope. All right, so Para Goblins is instant. This is instant. Uh, I'm gonna send in with the Channeler, see what we get, and know that we have uh, spoils to bail us out. Um, the bow is safe, but I'm, I'm gonna channel and know that we have spoils. Uh, and if they double block Paladin and Goblin on Channeler, then I'm gonna take out the Moon Dancer and be happy with all of that. Hello. All of that and no land. Come on. One land, please, deck. Come on. Well, now they got uh, nothing but a world of trouble here. We've got weaponry into treasure into spoils, but we still get to let them block if they want. I can't believe we nat 20 and didn't find a land. Although I guess we did uh, clear three non-lands off the top. Oh, weaponry is a sorcery. Good call. Uh, so in that case, do we want to save here? I mean, we can still... Um, we could save the channeler, kill the paladin, and dancer doesn't grow... Yeah, this is a fair trade, I suppose. Then we can kill the other paladin and still do the punch. I like that. Yeah, I'm with Mike. This will, this is all good. This clears so much of the board that it puts us in a in a fine position. They scribe to the top. Don't love to see that. But, oh, and we don't get the, sorry, um, I was thinking we had six mana, but we don't. So, actually, we have to, just going to go ahead and punch the Dancer now. Although we could, yeah, we just kind of have to leave this whole thing. Yeah, we could just get a 4-4. Four, four. Gotta do something. I'm running out of time. I'll do that. Ah, 
was a tough call. Not sure what I was supposed to do there. Uh, now we do get longbow and oh, we can just uh, weapon the flyer. Uh, and then, yeah, bow equip is, let's do bow equip, make them have something. Bow equip stops everything for now and then uh, see if they can draw out of it, right? That is not drawn out of it. Hmm, interesting swap of the equip. Uh we can keep these instants both up. Um, move bow onto goblins. I guess we can make a uh, three, two goblin. Three, two goblin, probably okay. If we want to make that play. Um, Well, they get to venture almost no matter what. I think I think we stay back on D. I think we kill the flyer, but let's see if they want to move. I'm going to pass because weapon is instant. Goblin is instant. I'm going to say no attacks. We're going to play it slow. And uh, I'm going to... I think they move the Delvering back to the Hawk. And we... Um, let's get them to spend some mana. If they want to tap here, yeah, that's fair. I, like, it's... There you go, though. There you go. So now, this being sorcery speed, I like... Uh, well, still just have to take out the planar ally, though, now. Do we wait to draw land? What, so we can get this at the same time? Maybe. I suppose we can give it a try. Depends on how badly we think we need a 4-4 versus just what we've got here. Yeah, I'm going to go with shooting it down. You'd kill the hawk. Interesting. I see the planar ally is a bigger problem than the hawk, but maybe we see things differently there. Could make a couple of uh, one ones and equip up an attack. I'm going to do it this way. Yeah, I, yeah, you're right. I should look at the clock. I got to make decisions. All right, we found this. That's good because I wanted to do this. they'd go for a block they didn't i'm still willing to trade my 3-3 for their 3-3 if they want to do that i can't even believe we're in this match i should uh make sure we don't lose on clock here I'm going to start make, playing, making some quick decisions and doing the best I can. Uh, 
I think if they're going to be spending their turn venturing via activated hawks, we can we can beat that. Ah, counter there is a really good play. Never mind. That's tough. Can't block that now. Gives him a good life swing back. Oh, and of course we're going to rip land after land now. That's how that works. But we're going to send everything but the... Uh, well, I guess we can leave a 1-1 one, one back. You can kind of move this over so that it has attacks here. I'm going to save this to block wearing bow. That was my plan. I want one of the goblins to die if they want to. Well, we got to trade with it. Try. That's going to be a killer. What a dumb card to lose to. But it does a thing, and it did it there. Yeah, we were trying to win with our dumb cards, not lose to their dumb cards. No, they had it in game one, I think. Now just waiting Oppo to waiting for Oppo to finish this off and we'll try to get the next one. Mike, good on you then. I liked trying to be aggressive and trying to find a way. Am I playing Halo Combat Evolved? No. Halo, in its original form, was kind of my exit ramp from uh, first-person shooters, or third, whatever it is, shooters. Seriously, the 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 uh, here's why Halo was my exit from from that whole genre. That's all right. I I don't know. Yeah, sorry. You're making a you're making a flood joke, but now you've got me on an aside of Halo. Halo introduced the notion of the rechargeable shield, right? You've got your health, and you've got your shield. And first, you got to knock down the shield, and then you can get to their health. And here's why this knocked me out of shooters. I've never been the best at shooters, but I've enjoyed them. And one of the things that I enjoy about shooters is that it's ultimately this attrition battle. Uh, if uh, you're better than me and we square off and you shoot me dead, but I shoot you to half health, all right, you got me. You got a kill. 
You got 100% of my health, but I got 50% of your health, and now I've respawned, and you're at 50% health, and I go track you down, and this time I manage to kill you before you get me down to 10% health, and then you re respawn and you kill me or whatever, and yes, over time you're going to beat me, that's fair, you're better than me, but at least I got to kill you sometimes, at least you died here and there, at least the number of kills I have would go up a little bit. But with regenerating shields, it took away my attrition. Like, I had no attrition. I was doing nothing. Like, I would show up, I would shoot you until your shield went away, you'd kill me, and I wouldn't have ac I accomplished nothing. It was so frustrating to me that, as a bad player, the system didn't allow me to even make progress at all. It was just like, you're so bad... There's no difference between you being here and you not being here, except that uh, other people's kill counts go up. And that's when I was off of uh, shooters. So I was like, all right, bye, shooters. <laughs> I was like, everybody here is better off without me, except my opponents, so I'm out. Anyway, back to it. Justice served there. Our crappy deck took a loss. Yeah, N64007 uh, was probably my most played shooter, console shooter. Um, PC shooters I never really got into. Yeah, I was just ne like uh, also aiming with a mouse, like whipping around with a mouse and aiming. That I couldn't do that either. So I was never in on uh, on PC shooters either. Yeah, Doom and Quake. I was never, I was terrible at those. Uh, are we keeping this on the strength of the turn two venture treasure? Turn three circle? I don't love it, but I'm going to keep whatever. We got a turn three play. That's about all I can hope for with this dumb deck. I don't think we idle on two, though. I don't think that's worth it. Raining grenades. That sounds like the kind of thing I would do. In in any game like that, I was always sniper. I really enjoyed Halo uh, first person though. Like uh, I, I I beat like Halo and Halo Two on uh, PVE. I'm down for uh, for shooters when I'm not getting completely and utterly dismantled by much better players. Gonna drop the Moon Druid, gonna make him uh, hook up this equipment, and then we can destroy it uh, after they've invested some more mana into it. Eh. Real problem here is we just don't have a second thing to do. This is not a not a super impressive uh, fourth turn by any stretch, but I am gonna do the thing we can do. Smash it. Oh man, Syriana, I can't even imagine. I mean, I can't imagine actually, and I'm doing it right now, and I, yeah, no. Not going to be the most welcoming community for you. All right, probably need to like fireball a singer here just to not fall too far behind, since of course we're going to draw more land. We will say goodbye to flesh and blood. Feign death. This card, you don't want too many of them because, I mean, you don't, you don't want your hand clogged with Feign Deaths, but man, Feign Death in the uh, Quick Draft especially, where it's a bunch of black-red mirrors with high-quality removal, Feign Death is sicko. It's like, uh, it's like 
What's the uh, green plus one plus one counter and hex proof uh, that they reprinted in the archive? It's like that. It's like Ranger's Guile or whatever, or what you know the the good Ranger's Guile, Snakeskin Veil. Thanks. It's like Snakeskin Veil, except you get death triggers and ETB triggers. So Snakeskin Veil, but with death triggers and ETB triggers. Love it. Don't love our situation here though. Uh, if we get a creature and they have nothing but land, it's not over. If they play anything, we're dead, though. All right, now we're dead. Wow, was that the most boring loss of all time? All right, just uh, straight black red. I sure, certainly know how that deck works, and we're likely to just lose to it, and we have no swaps. I mean, Battlecry Gobbo on two is good, but six lands is not particularly keepable. You're just asking to die to flood. I mean, you can't keep that. <sighs> you know how we won on a mold of four that one time? This is not a deck that can win on a mold of four. That being said, we can't keep this either. All right, so now we got to keep this and we got to ditch like the bard. We need to keep this just to make treasure to uh, be able to cast some of this stuff. I think we can get rid of the plundering barbarian and we've got to live off of this making treasure to cast a battle cry that allows us to kill something. And, heck, I'm going to do this as much for the scry as the treasure. I mean, it is what the deck is designed to do. I mean, you know, them curving out. Like, this is just the, the deck's plan. All right, we're hanging in, though. We can now weaponry the captain. battle cry and get it on board right now but then i don't have the hunter's mark for sure i'm gonna wait can always uh do this for haste next turn anyway there's almost no difference all right now i'm gonna go swarming gobbo for the five if we have a mountain off the top we can and get super lucky let's get let's roll a nat 20 Get three goblins, find a mountain off the top, and battle cry into a heck of an attack. Hey, I'll take the two. I'll take the two. Thank you for the two, deck. If they send just the fang blade or they send both, I think we do trade off for the fang blade, though. Um, I know the Battlecry Goblin wants to make these big and everything, but I don't want their Fang Blade to get going. Grim indeed. We do have Burning Hands to take out an Armory Veteran and at least our Gobbo trades for their Wanderer. So um, we're gonna hands the vet and try to trade off for the Wanderer. 
And I'll just do this while shields are down before they get anything value out of it. Yeah, I didn't want to put it, this at risk to the to the ghast. Uh, super bummer. Now we need a mountain just so that we can pump in response and uh, be able to trade. Well, what do you get when you combine bad luck and a bad deck? A very quick O2. Now I feel like we need, let's see, what is our out here? We can block here and trade for the ghast, take five and go to four. But what are we drawing to deal with the wanderer in that case? At three mana, circle of the moon druid doesn't do it. Choose your weapon, pair of goblins doesn't do it. Plundar, bull strength, ugh. Hey, when I have an average deck, it's bad. Around here, we aim for above average. And I do, yeah, I think it's just fairly bad. I mean, there's some good cards in it, but it's way bad. I think we're just dead. I, I don't know what we can draw. I guess we can draw, no, Bard doesn't do it. I don't see what we can even do here. So that means we have to take it because now I need to draw a second creature to try and take the Grim Wanderer out with. So we gotta take all this and hope uh, there are two lands and we... Okay, this works because uh, it gets plus one, plus one. So we can at least kill the, uh, kill the Wanderer and I'll do that now. Again, I just don't want him to have any time to do anything. Although, actually, I'll wait on their turn because then the ghast, uh, the the goblin lives through the gas, so I should wait. Yeah, yeah, hammer's right. But I'll do it uh, main phase or uh, pre-main. Should do it here. I'm not gonna wait till they swing. I don't care at this point. Yeah, they can see it. I just didn't want him. To, I didn't want him to, to to get value uh, off of the attempt to kill this off the top. Like if they drew something like the uh, instant speed sack draw to make a treasure, that would have been unacceptable. Well, this is the part where Oppo has nothing but lands for the rest of the game. <laughs> Maybe not. That explains everything. I'm like, that was an interesting suicide attack, right? Like, they're just like, they just sent that in. Doesn't this have haste? Why didn't... Oh, because we got a, a flyer blocker. Well, still not dead yet. Not dead yet. Your friend here is only mostly dead. You got it, new brew. Thanks for the sub. Much appreciated. Uh, I guess I'll make him worry. I, whatever. This, sandbag, play the land. All right. Utterly annihilated by a reasonable deck. That's justice in magic there for you. It does happen sometimes, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, somehow we were in there for a little bit. Too much removal, though. Well, I got the one win I was expecting. Expectations met. Pretty bad draft. Pretty bad deck. Arguments that it is okay, that it is average. But honestly, if that's an average deck, is that really an average deck? That's a below average deck. That's just a below average deck. Come on. It was low on creatures. The creatures it did have were underpowered. The spells that it had were underpowered. It was, well, a hot mess. I like the name. 
Well, you can't draft a beauty every time, YouTube friends. That's what you get today. Um, hope you learned what not to do. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll catch you at the next draft. Hopefully we'll do better that one.